Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Spot Real Talk. My name is Tiara. I'm Tiffany. And I'm Ron. And we have some guests with us today, some of our spotters. Uh, would you like to introduce yourselves first, ladies? I will defer right. to my lovely fellow guest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Rainy, you're up first then, I guess. Okay, hi guys, I'm Randy J, and I can't believe that I'm on with you guys. Thank y'all so much for having me. Out of all the panels, you guys are in my top three. Oh, thank you. Yes. thank you, thank you. I'm from the Bronx, New York, but now I live in New Jersey. Okay. Hey, all right. Hey, welcome. I am Cecilia, uh, and I'm tuning in from the Washington, D.C. area. I'm uh, privileged to be a part of the discussion. Uh, with with the spot host, so thank you for having. Thank you both team. for joining us. We have a you and uh, Ron is a homie too. That she's she's a dear oh, friend. Oh, okay, that's nice. <laughs> yes. And Ron, we have a special guest that we are waiting for you to bring in. Yes, we do, and he is oh. on the way. A special guest. I'm excited. Yes. I know. It's like okay, I'm I'm waiting. Guys, hey, and there he is. Oh, okay. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. It's, it's the oh, boogie man. How are you? Thanks for the invite. <laughs> it's I, the I'm boogie afraid. man. I'm almost afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Every right. time you see him, everyone can settle in. I have to go hide. <laughs> I can, I can well. tell everyone's been living right. Everyone is safe. Good All luck, right. uh, <laughs> uh, look, uh, Mr. Bonilla, you are my favorite gangster. Uh, <laughs> no, you know, if you thank you for saying that amongst such an amazing cast, right? <laughs> and we can we can all very easily and truthfully say this cast was um was amazing from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you guys are familiar, this is Nelson Bonilla. He is in most recently, you know, in the hit Netflix series Ozark. And you know, like they said, the boogeyman. I mean, when you seen him coming, you know it's about to go. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's over. It's over. Yeah, I don't get to smile much. So. And he's a sound an assassin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and sometimes you don't see it coming. Right. Don't. So you don't. don't see it coming. <laughs> That's what was that was one of the many, many great things about the writing is a lot of shows tend to spoon feed information to some of our audience members, right? Mm -hmm. And today I think audience members are more savvy. They're smarter. You know, there's so much content out there um, that it's unnecessary at times. And for them to kind of slow burn this story, I mean, okay, when you see the Escalade show up, <laughs> and, and Nelson comes out, then I, I mean, you can, there might be something uh, to be concerned with, but not, you know, not, not every situation called for it. And, and this season specifically, you might have noticed that a lot of, a lot of the action was implied, mm -hmm. right? There wasn't yeah. a whole lot of gore. There wasn't a whole, there were some gunshots and stuff like that, but I think they artfully, very artfully, just implied what the next action was. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you know, you took out a lot of people on the show, mm -hmm. and so like one of my favorite people that you took out was the therapist. <laughs> now, do oh. you have a favorite scene or any yeah. particular right. purpose? Uh, I about that. That <laughs> a favorite kill. <laughs> well, it's very interesting you say that, right? Because yes, Nelson happened to take out a lot of the more colorful, more interesting characters. Mm. And after a while, you, you kind of take, you know, you start taking a little pride in that and you just wonder, okay, <laughs> who's next, right? Because they're all lovable characters. And that's one of, that's one of the things that, that the showrunner and lead writer, you know, had addressed early on you know, when you have a show and you have these favorite colorful characters and all of a sudden they're gone, you know, that, that's, what, that's what the stakes are, right? That's, that's when the stakes get really high. No one, no one really cares about a boring character or someone else if they get taken off the show or killed off. Um, 
but Sue Sue was special in in many different ways because she uh, Mary Lou is 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 the actress that played Sue. She was so funny. She was hilarious. She was so tiny. And I remember one of the I remember one of the first few takes that we did. I, I think Nelson's ringing the doorbell and she's happy and she's answering the door. And she didn't this, say a this dramatic reveal of Nelson at the door. And I remember looking surprised at one of my first takes because it just her like her demeanor, her size, um, mm. you know, taking taking someone like this out wasn't wasn't necessarily foreign to him, but I I, I think I think it caught me by surprise. I, I think the camera might have caught it. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna rewatch that to see that. Tiffany, yeah. you wanna Yeah, I you know, I was heartbroken when you killed Ben. Yeah. I was heartbroken uh -huh. when you killed Ben. And then, you know, the scene in part two, when he was, um, you know, pretty much pleading with you and telling you to, to tell his sister that she forgive, that he forgave her and all of that. And Nelson says nothing. He never gives up anything. He doesn't show his card. He doesn't, he doesn't right. show any emotion. I'm like, wow. I think he told him to turn away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Turn your head. You know, one of, I, my character was introduced in season two it's very stoic, very quiet, right? And early on, it was it was established that Nelson would would more or less be a a a tool, right? A a a soldier. I'm I'm tempted to say robot because I, I think Ruth might have called him a robot at one point, he and it was simply yeah, it, he was simply to be pointed <laughs> in the right yeah. direction. And given some directions and let go, and, and I think for me early on, you know, that's kind of difficult. There's there's not there's not a whole lot of range. There's not a lot of conflict in there. As an actor, that you really relish, you really want to get into. But it took a tremendous amount of discipline. Uh, the way Tiffany, what she mentioned, was you know the 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 ability to be unaffected by whoever and whatever the situation was. It was, it, it was equally as hard for Ben, Tom Pelfrey, because him and I became friends right away. I mean, we're both Jersey boys. Jersey, I live in Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that I saw you from Camden. Camden, New Jersey. Oh, Camden, wow, you made up there, wow. Yeah, yeah, Survivor. Yes. <laughs> so, so we hit it off right away. And, you know, in, in season three, again, one of those implied actions, Ben is here, here's a body, how did it get there? All these insinuations about, oh, well, maybe, maybe he's not dead, maybe Nelson let him go. So there wasn't a tremendous amount of action there. So when I found out that Ben was coming back and that we were shooting that scene and what had happened, I was excited for many, many reasons because that, number one, I knew the audience were going to be one brokenhearted all over again. Mm -hmm. That's how I felt. We were about to yes. heal, and two, that I got to hang out with 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 Tom again um, here nice. in Georgia, and and it was amazing. So, and that guy is the real deal. Mm -hmm. He really is. I mean, imagine again when I'm talking about this discipline when you're eavesdropping, right? I mean, you're literally seeing a gentleman broken, flawed, just raw edges everywhere. To not be affected by that was, was, was very difficult, you know? And Maybe again, when we have, we have these guardrails there, right? And, and they're the writers and the producers and the directors. And you know, and you have, and you just get that little whisper that little reminder, Nelson, remember, it's just a job. I want this stoic approach. There's nothing personal. He's just in the way. These are just small little reminders that help you do your job. Um, and then you just, you, just, you just shine the spotlight on, on the person that you're working with.
Oh yeah. Well, you definitely killed yeah. that because if unfathered was a person, it would be your character. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh unbothered. When, even when you shoot Helen, you don't really see Nelson. You know, that was but a you surprise know. to That's me. Right. Another big surprise. Yeah. Uh, another oh big my surprise. Gosh. I'll tell you another little secret about about that scene. Um, there was there was a scene in episode five that that preempted the finale. Helen was coming outside of the birdhouse. I think Marty had just been kidnapped and, and the girls were wondering what was going to happen. And she calls Nelson and says, I think you better, I think you better come down to the Ozarks. And Nelson shows up. She gets in the, she gets in the escalator. And one of the first things she does is she asks Nelson, if, 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 if you get the call, you know, would you tell me? I remember that scene. Remember that, that. A lot of people remember right. that scene because they just, they just at that point, it was a betrayal, right? Like, I, yeah, because you didn't tell her. Nelson, did Nelson work for her? Did he work for Navarro? And I remember coming back to shoot that. I was out of town on another project, and they, they, they brought me back, and we were going to shoot this specific scene. There was, there was a, a, a guest director, and, and when you show up to do these scenes with some of these guest directors, you you want to have a little sit down, a little powwow as to how the approach should be, right? How do you see it? These are my thoughts. What do you think? And it revolved around whether or not we wanted to let the audience members in on the gag, on whatever the gag is. Now, what should be understood is that at this point, no one knew what the outcome was going to be. Janet McTeer did, who, who plays Helen. So mm. while the director and I are discussing this, Helen comes up, she goes, actually, we should probably go inside and discuss this. And, and the director and I are like, well, yeah, of course. And then she goes, um, privately. So we're like, okay. So we're in, we're in the birdhouse and, and Janet kind of lets the cat out of the bag and says, well, truth be known, you're going to kill me or I'm going to die and you're going to be the one to kill me and you're going to shoot me in the head. Wow. We're all friends, right? This is season two, season three. We all become friends and, and, you know, there's this bond happening between Janet and I and you work together, you get to know each other a little bit. Um, and you make up these backstories as to how we got together and, you know, uh, to fill in the blanks. And I think it hit us. It hit us all. Even the director, yeah. um, who, wasn't, who didn't direct episode, the finale, but was directing the, the, current, the current episode that, that we were working on. Mm -hmm. So um, that was a big surprise. Hit us yeah. all. And again, I think this was episode five, so it was early on. Wow. I always wondered how that process that. worked, how they fill you guys in in the background. Um, but thank you for that information because that filled in the blanks. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I want to throw to Ron. I know Ron has a question as well. <laughs> well, first, first what I'd like to do is give you some math props because you've been, oh. in, in some of your previous works, I mean, most of them, if not all of them, were some of my favorites, like Banji. Um, uh, being Mary Jane, uh, The Walking Dead, which uh, I love absolutely, oh. <laughs> and the Alter of Hill House. Now I'll tell you, that one. Who's that last you, one? Uh, the Haunting of the Hill House. Oh, yes. You remember that? You played a blind man. Yes. And you were uh, in an Alcoholics Anonymous class, and they really put uh, the, the, um, the uh, camera on you. And I mean to tell you, you went to town with, with that, uh, you know, that scene. But what I want to ask is, out of all the ones that, all the, the you know, the um, programs that you've been in, including Ozark, which one would you say is your most favorite? My favorite? Yes. You know, it's difficult because every time you get the call, every time you get that yes, <laughs> right? It's, uh -huh. it's a win. And, and you have to take them 
for what they are, right? At this point in my career, I'm still, I still consider myself a professional auditioner, right? It's, it's, it's very rare that something comes along that I haven't fought for, auditioned for, sent in multiple, type, multiple tapes for. So each one is special in, in that unique way because for every yes you get, there might be a hundred no calls, a hundred no hears, right? So each one is, is special and unique in its own way. Ozark, Ozark, of course, being being the show, I mean, I've, this is the longest run I've ever had on a specific show. Um, the fans have never experienced anything like that. Uh, the following, uh, the, the fire that these fans have for each one of these characters. So that, of course, it will always, always be special. Um, but you mentioned the, the, the haunting of Hill House. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why that stuck out to me was that was the first time casting had seen me uh, in a different light, right? Mm -hmm. We have casting assesses you, they see some essence of who you are or what they think you are and what you can portray. And for me, it's been a bunch of dirt bags, right? A bunch of bad guys, right? Either a crooked cop, a military guy, uh, uh, an assassin, thug, enforcer. And I don't hate any of those things. I mean, it's this face. Um, and, 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 you know, for, for, you know, growing up in Camden, New Jersey, it was difficult. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of opportunity there. Um, and you had to hustle, you had to fight, you had to scrap for, for everything. So when, when that role came along, um, I was very excited, right? Because there was plenty different levels. If you remember, Ron, that, this guy was a hot mess. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I don't want to give away for anyone, but I mean, he really hurt himself. The reason he's blind is because he, he literally carved the eyeballs out of his head while he was, right. while he was high mm -hmm. because he was suffering from PTSD right. uh, from being uh, yeah. in the military. So when you talk about layers and, and contrasting and conflict, man, that excited me. It excited me. And then of course it scared the hell out of me. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you remember on that day, I remember uh, Mike Flanagan directed uh, every one of those episodes. He, he wrote and directed every one of those episodes. Mm -hmm. And he came up to me, he goes, I got some good news and I got some bad news. Uh, bad news is we're going to do this in a one shot in what they call a one-er, which is there's no cuts, there's no edits. We're just going to, we're going to zoom in. We're gonna stay on your monologue. We're gonna zoom out and we're gonna get this all in one shot. That was a bad news. <laughs> good news was, hey Nelson, we're not gonna move on until you're happy. So there was, you know, that was probably the, 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 the beginning um, of, of casting finally starting to see a little bit deeper into the storefront. Right, you have this big reader board right here, right? Everybody sees this facade, and they were starting to see into the storefront and and see what other hot, messy stuff was in here. So well, that was I'm, a horror, I'm a horror fan, and I suggest anyone that hasn't seen it, you really need to go check them out because mm -hmm. I mean, you, you sold that bowl, and I could feel every essence of what you were talking about, oh, thank particularly you. with that PSD and the young woman that uh, you had described in such a horrifying manner. Right, I, yeah, if you remember that, Ron, it was very graphic, um, mm -hmm. the, the, the writing was very specific, the rhythm of it, um, you know, these military guys, they're conditioned to see and not respond, right? They're conditioned to have a tremendous sense of detachment from what they see and what they're forced to engage in. Um, my character clearly struggled with that, but you could still 
miss the military guy when he's when he's kind of in his um in his rhythm in his decorum right he's just spitting out these facts and then these tragic memories start kind of spiking uh his rhythm uh and 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 as an actor uh those are the things that you kind of dream of you know and collaboration between the director and and, and the writer and, and 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 yourself those are the things that you've seen that you've admired for so long from a distance right because when we first show up i might be soldier number three police officer number four number two number one then you finally get a name but from from a distance you're watching these actors and you're watching them collaborate and tell this story and you just desperately want to get into that into that sphere mm -hmm. of influence yeah. um and I, I and it's i think it's starting to happen oh yeah mm. it's gonna happen because nelson yeah. i mean people are gonna know who you are forever exactly. now Ozark. <laughs> yes thank you yes for sure and I, 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 I hope i hope oh yeah for sure yeah, i want to get to us uh, Cecilia, did you have a question to answer? Yeah, so I just wanted to just kind of um, go back for a moment when you talked about just the level of sort of kind of um, quiet control that you had to have. But just even how, even with that, so you didn't have all of, you know, as much dialogue and as much of the, but because of that quiet control and the way your character moved, you know, it's like, we know we're watching a show but it, it, there's so many elements that just seem like it's so real. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. it just, you know, like this is actually happening. But um, I think it, you really just made such a, a huge mark. So even though you may feel like, you know, this, I didn't have a role that had, you know, engaged as much or had all of the speaking, but it's like sure. your character made a mm -hmm. huge impression <laughs> an impression <laughs> for viewers. And so... Um, but, you know, I was thinking about just, the, you know, we, we've talked about sort of the, you know, the surprise kills and the favorite kills. Yeah. Um, but I'm wondering for you, what was um, maybe one of the more, more challenging, um, um, even if it wasn't a kill necessary, what was one of the more challenging um, things perhaps that you may have experienced um, playing the part of uh, the role of Nelson on the show? Well, I think there was there were certain levels when you come in. Again, my my character was introduced in season two. I had no idea how long I would be around. I remember finishing the first episode, <clears throat> and everyone saying their goodbyes, and 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 Jason Bateman uh, directed the first two. So I'm I'm in line waiting to say thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Had the you know had the time of my life. Um, if you ever need me again, just sit here and I'll be back. And I remember him saying, shaking my hand and, and saying, no, it was his pleasure and that we're not done with you yet. Wow. So that That's was so exciting, exciting, right? That, and because no one, again, I had no idea how long I was here for. I mean, I don't think casting knew a, a whole lot beyond what we were shooting on the day. So at that point, there's anticip anticipation, right? You you get to show up to work. Every time you come back, it seems like more and more of a familial environment. Um, mm. So yeah, there was one part <clears throat> that making sure that I was following the correct lead, right? Jason Bateman, Laura Linney, Janet McTeer early on, Julia um, um, Garner, they all stayed in their lanes and there was no one fighting for more lines, more camera time. And that comes down from the top. So if you're paying attention, which dear God, you should be I, at any level. If you're on a on a major studio production, TV or film, you really need need to pay attention because they're setting they're setting a pace. They're 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 setting um, they're setting a stage for how they expect everyone else to be. So at that point, it was very easy to kind of fall in line and and follow suit. 
and again, every now and again, every now and again, you get to show up on a project and all you have to do is be on time, be professional, be prepared, and be ready to work. And the writing and the other actors do all of the work. It makes it look so easy. You made a, you made a statement earlier about how even the smallest actions seem to have life. The reason because of the reason that is is because of the level of acting at the top, right? They 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 show, uh, they don't tell, right? So when you're when you're privileged to have a veteran like Jason Bateman and Laura Linney who are masters of stillness, uh, right? It's here. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you're paying attention, then that kind of eases and you just know you're always working. Because the camera, the camera is probably one of the most sensitive lie detectors ever made. Yeah. <laughs> and it can see if you're not paying attention it could see if you're distracted. It could see your wheels turn in. So if you can somehow remember that and remember that there's always a camera rolling, most of the times you know, um, but you make a good point. A lot of time I was in the background. I was waiting on an action. I was opening a door. I was driving someone to a location, but we were always working and if I could remind myself of that, um, then I could always be there. Mm -hmm. I could always be there and never get caught, right? Mm. That's the last thing you want to do as an actor is get caught. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a lot of praise wow. for the show, for all of those things you said a lot. The writing was so tight. The acting was on point. Like, the show was, like, so flawless and everything. And, and mm -hmm. Tiffany often praises it for constantly raising stakes and it was just overall like everything about it. I think that's why the fans are so like sad to see it go. <laughs> I know. I rewatched that finale like several times, including oh Mud in the, the episode where you passed away. And I, I want to throw it, I know you want to throw it to Rainey to ask the question, <laughs> but I have a question for you after Rainey yeah. about okay. about the episode that you were, sure. were killed in, Mud. <laughs> so go ahead, Rainey. Ask. Oh, yes. I wanted to know, what is Nelson's backstory? Mm, Ooh, that's a good good question. Nelson and Ozark. Yeah. Right, right. Um, well, he, he, he has a military background, right? Now, again, this was nothing that was provided for me, right? This is something that, as an actor, you have to sum you have to find a way to fill in the blanks. There's a reason why I'm here with you. There's been a journey, right? So mm -hmm. I think early on, Janet McTeer and I, we, 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 had, we spent a lot of time behind the scenes and figuring out, like, how is it that I became her guy? Like, why didn't I become, um, why didn't I become Navarro's guy? Why didn't I become Wendy and, 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 and Marty's guy? So there, were, there was a sense of, there was some military background. There was, there was a higher level of performance. If you remember the distinction between season one and the henchmen, mm -hmm. they were a little rougher around the edges, right? And I'm yeah. tempted to say, um, I'm tempted to say a, a little more thuggish than, than season two was a level up. Like mm -hmm. the performance stepped up. That's when Janet and Helen, well, that's when Helen showed up, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and she had her investigator slash driver. And I was just a little bit sharper, um, a little bit cleaner. Um, I didn't, there, there was no posturing. There was just a sense of capability, right? Mm -hmm. and, I, and we established early on that Yes, I was always in the family. Uh, I was one of the few that had military experience, hence the discipline. Um, and, and, and that's what set me apart. And, 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 and Navarro being the one to decide, Helen gets Nelson. 
Mm. Very oh, believable. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, because I had I was wondering. I'm like, you don't know anything about Nelson. Well, Except I thought he was Navarro. The job done. Yeah, yeah I, I thought, thought he was Navarro's guy. Was guy. I thought yeah. he was Navarro's well, guy. Well, again, yes, Tip. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, everyone has to realize that that it was Navarro that always had the controls on Nelson. Mm -hmm. You know, the even though even though season three really showed a heavy, heavy alliance and and a lot of fidelity from Nelson to Helen, mm -hmm. Helen did have a job, and at the end of the day, she became expendable right oh. option between what the birds can do and what helen was doing and could do it was just an easy decision um, and that was another thing i was really excited about season four like how how would the alliances realign yeah that's mm -hmm. because i was wondering, being gone. i was wondering if you know if nelson had stuck around would he have been you know with camilla would he have gone down <laughs> over her, but no mm. that's a good question that's a good question um i think we established that i i was going to go down with navarro yeah i was very I, safe I, I was right i was going to ride or die <laughs> with navarro and had we known had we known quicker right marty and marty and wendy sat on that information had he known sooner i think we would have been able to we would have been able to 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 respond uh but yeah that question was laid on me and we were shooting i think it was episode 11 laura linney had had directed this this uh that this was a funny episode, episode. yeah she is <laughs> <laughs> she is a gift. She's a gift on many different levels, but as an actor being directed by another actor mm. of that stature so was next level stuff. But yeah, at that point we established, yeah, she's um she's gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> she's gotta go. But we had no idea in the world, in, in Ozark, what, what she was up to. But I, I, I feel I feel pretty strongly that, that Nelson would have sided with Navarro. Yeah. Okay. So too, and, and here's why, that leads to my question for you. You know, the um, behind the scenes, we were really going back and forth, um, my other colleague who's not on today. We were, I was torn about why Nelson was going after Ruth in the mud episode anyway because i was like we didn't find out until the season finale well we all knew that ruth killed uh javi but camilla didn't find out until the season finale but mm -hmm. nelson you were already following ruth and you followed her to the police station and then you automatically went to her house mm -hmm. and she knew she called rachel and said hey if he finds you there, he's going to kill you. So I was like, so why was he, why was Nelson there? Why was he after Ruth? Because you didn't know that she killed Javi. No, no. And quite frankly, I don't think that would have mattered. I, I don't think it had anything to do with that, right? Um, I remember, I remember sh that night. And, and we shot, we shot those sequences on, on different days in different locations, right? So the chase happened on one day. And then of course the 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 event happened on on another day at the trailers. And I remember calling Chris, asking him the same thing. I said, "Am I did I mm. miss something? Because I don't I don't remember anyone giving the order right for for Nelson." And he's like, "No, no, no, no. You were always you were always charged with this from the moment you approached Rachel, right? Because." the birds needed, they needed to launder this specific right. amount of money through, through the bell. Mm -hmm. And Rachel was like, fine, after mm -hmm. she was coerced by Nelson. Yeah, right. <laughs> but Ruth is just gangster, man. She just wasn't mm. having it, right? So I, I, I think that's what, that's what Chris, the, 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 the showrunner said, now this, it was always on from that point on. Okay. Okay. Because I was had the opportunity. Yeah, that's interesting. Now this had nothing to do with Marty and Wendy. 
right? E even though Marty and Wendy still have their conflicts between whether Ruth is an ally or an adversary, whether, you know, she's um, helpful or hurting, it had nothing to do with that. It, it had everything to do with Navarro and, and Ruth just being in the way. Mm. And I have to tell you, as a fan of the show, I was really rooting for Ruth. Weren't we all? Uh, yeah. Well, in a, in a lot of ways, yeah. right? In a lot of ways. But Nelson took a lot from her. If you guys remember in season two, it was her dad. Yeah. Season three, yeah. then. Yeah. And there was, and, and you know, as, as an actor and a character, you're always plotting. You're always wondering, like, I know I'm going to get it. I mean, I might survive. I just want to survive to the last episode, right? But you're always wondering and plotting like, oh, okay, I did that to him. I mean, he could get his, you know, his, he could get, his get back on me, or, but I totally changed Ruth's life. She mm -hmm. deserves the reckoning. Mm -hmm. And as a fan, I was like, I think that would, that would be awesome to see. But you know, she was never really that kind of person, like a killer. Yes, she was an opportunistic, you know, she was opportunistic, but to get Nelson, she would have to just really get get the drop on him, which actually they inadvertently did. <laughs> yeah. You didn't know Rachel. Rachel was was the X factor. Yeah. yeah. yeah so I was gonna ask you that too because I think Tiffany you hinted at it but you know how did it feel when the guy who has been notorious for killing everyone else how did it feel when you found out that your day was finally going to come where you yeah. were going to be killed uh, uh, well part of you part of you is relieved right because you're like okay yeah. now I know right yeah. and then as an actor you're like oh episode 13 of 14 I'm cool with that. That's yeah. amazing. Right? Absolutely. I'm totally cool yeah, with that. Yeah, you just wrote it. Hang out. You want to hang out for as long as you can. And you just want to put your best work out there. And you want to help land this plane for everybody. And, if, and of course, you know, my arc was helping set that up. So uh, you're, you're relieved at some point. And then again, you're like, all right, episode 13 or 14. Cool. I want to do that. And... The, what was so amazing was that night was also my last night on set. Wow. Which is very oh, rare. Okay. It doesn't wow. always happen like that. On, right. on a lot of occasions, you end up shooting your death scene and oh, you're still working for yeah. like two or three weeks because we mm -hmm. don't always shoot in order. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it just so happened that that was my last day. Um... And it was it was much more emotional than than I had anticipated. Mm -hmm. yeah, I bet. <laughs> Let me ask you this: I, I I think I read somewhere on I saw an earlier interview where you spoke about your training uh, as an actor, and acting really wasn't your passion until uh, you were in a church play or something. And I think you kind of right. right. yeah. oh yeah, wow. I was I was a late bloomer, man. I was, I, was, I was in my 30s when I found a little church in South Georgia and, you know, my relationship with God just mm. opened my eyes to so many things. Wow. And prior to that, I was just stumbling, bumping to every obstacle life could throw at me or that I, quite frankly, was putting up myself. And so when that happened, it kind of opened up this world for me. And just a small part of this, this, this vision he gave me, right? I mean, he had, it was like he had lifted the veil and said, okay, you know, your old life is past. This is, this is the beginning of your new life. And in this new life, you could have this, um, but it was an accident, right? It wasn't a, it, it was, that's it, it, hard, it, it's that's difficult okay. to say it, but I kind of stumbled into it. That's better. I stumbled into it because at the church, 
they had a drama ministry. And, you know, when, you, when something changes your life, whether it's a company or a church, you just want to give back, you want to serve, you want to, you know, how can I, uh, how can I give something back? And I was like, well, I can do that. And that's how it began. I, I started wow. doing little skits on Sundays that the, the pastor would, would, would have us come up with a little skit, a two minute skit to kind of help uh illustrate the message of the week um and then that just kept building and building and next thing you know i found an agent and hmm. uh that's how it all began wow. Wow. that's interesting you know, I, yeah. god's plan right <laughs> was god's plan. You know, i'm careful because in the grand scheme of things you know i don't like to say well like god gave me this vision that you're going to be an actor <laughs> nelson it wasn't so much that it was just he moved all of the clutter right and when i cleaned mm -hmm. myself up and i started realizing well okay i'm not dumb i'm kind of sharp it was just a lot of this this baggage that i was carrying around that he relieved me of and your gifts started to surface probably out That's of right yes right, right? and you say yeah. you say these you want to fan into flame these these gifts that god has given you you don't know what they are prior to because you're in the way it's all ego we get in the way yep yeah. we sure do it's all me and That's true. I had no idea what my ego was based on it was, it was just mm. craziness but when you when you relinquish yourself of that smoke clears and you put him first, um, Amen. things change. Yes. Things change. Amen. So well, you, thank you for taking us to church this afternoon. Thank you, <laughs> thank you for leading. Thank you for leading me, Ronald. I don't look if somebody asks, you know, I'm I'm quick to tell them. Um, you know, this is an industry that that doesn't always allow that light to shine. You know, exactly. so when, whenever whenever I have the opportunity, I, I, I like. Yeah. To oh, I appreciate. So it. I can have one question, guys. If I can squeeze it in. Go ahead. Did you ever see Laura Minnie and Mystic River? Oh God, yes. Oh um, my God, I, I believe I was, she had to see her. She said, broke my movie. heart. She broke my heart so many times <laughs> on film. You know, she, she was never a big TV actor. Right. So when when we when Ozark scored her for this, it was a it was a big get. Mm -hmm. But she, mm -hmm. yeah, Primal Fear was probably the first time oh, I saw yes. her with Richard Gere. Right. Mm -hmm. right. She was in that. Right, and then Mystic River. I mean, oh. she. Yeah, and 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 that woman's spirit, whether she's directing, whether she's acting, the essence of her, you get, you get, you get it all, and that's what's so beautiful about this. And I'll leave you, I'll, I'll leave you guys with this. Um, we, I was mentioning earlier how sometimes you're forced to admire things from a distance, right? When we're all kids. We had our favorite sports person, our favorite singer, um, our favorite actor, and we would watch them on TV. We would go to the movies. We might have been fortunate to see them in concert, but we were always admiring them from a distance. And in this industry, I've been able to kind of work myself into this atmosphere where I got to see some of the people that inspired me to to pursue this and the amount of humanity that i get to experience inside this circle inside this atmosphere um i hope i never get used to it because mm -hmm. it really you know the hollywood gets a bad rap and and deservingly so and they have for a long time but things are starting to change i think you know the humanity and humility that some of these actors um, are clinging to because of how hard it is to get here, number mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. and how difficult it is to stay. Okay. Um, yeah. And when you see people like Jason, Laura, and Julia, Julia's a little younger, but Janet Mateer, 
Mm-hmm. And they, you see that sense of humility and gratitude mm-hmm. um, and humanity. It's, it's inspiring. And I hope I never get used to that. Wow. Yeah. Mm. So wow. We want to be mindful of your time. So we thank you so much. We appreciate you taking the time. Thank to you. you. Thank you. you Look, if you guys are fans and you guys want to keep watching, there is a new there is a new series that came out last year on BET Plus called Sacrifice. Oh, with yeah. Paula, with Paula Patton, who, mm-hmm. right? It was oh, created wow. by Chris Stokes, who did, um, what did Chris Stokes did? He, uh, he, he wrote and created- Oh, uh, with Marcus Houston? With Marcus Houston. Marcus Houston, and, yes. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And they came and up. wrote- they came and wrote Sacrifice for BET Plus last year. We did the pilot. There's 10 episodes up on, on BET Plus right now. Well, Paula definitely Patton, watch is that. another beautiful okay. person. Um, and we're going back. As a matter of fact, we're, we just got we just got the green light for season two. Okay. Congratulations. Right sure. Congratulations. Okay. I'm very, very, very excited. Thank you. thank you very much. <laughs> um, but guys, thank you for inviting me. I, I oh, really thank appreciate you. it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And Nelson, I have to yeah. tell you that my mom is from Camden. She went to Camden oh, High School. Hmm, I still really? have family there, and I'm originally from Philly. So I would have gone. I definitely know the road that you traveled. She knows. <laughs> she, she knows, knows. right? <laughs> yeah. I would have gone to Woodrow Wilson, right? Because there's only two high schools here. Oh, yeah. And I and Woodrow Wilson. But oh, my dad okay. got smart. He was like, I'm going to pull you out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm glad he did. Because that was kind of the beginning of my exit and uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know, that detour. It was still a long road, but that was like the first detour to get out of there. So I like to go back as often as I can. Mm-hmm. It changes, but it's um, yeah. No, I understand. <laughs> I understand. And, I, and, I, and I'm familiar with the the, um, the Wilson and Camden High High School. Mm-hmm. Two weeks. I used to go with my mother to the uh, turkey game. Like yeah. Yeah, every oh. year. And, and, and they would have the battle of the bands, and it would be amazing because it was a high school. They were high schools, but they it seemed like college bands. These bands were yeah. awesome, and they are high schoolers. They were gifted. Wow. They were gifted. And look, there weren't many passports, as I like to say, out of Camden. Right? You were going to mm-hmm. be an athlete. You were going to be a singer slash writer. Mm-hmm. You were going to go mm-hmm. to the military. Maybe no one thought of being an actor. I didn't. You know, I, again, I stumbled into that, but um, yeah, I'm, 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 I, I think it's a very difficult thing to spend the last 30 years kind of shedding some of the most more harmful, maybe dangerous aspects of that childhood mm-hmm. while clinging yeah. to some of the things that I think serves me well today. You know, the tenacity, mm-hmm. a certain amount of grit. Mm-hmm. Um, that never give up the mm-hmm. hustle it's never over um so distinguishing between those attributes has been difficult but um yeah i'll share with anybody yes i'm from camden new jersey camden. <laughs> right and say so now you're part of ozark history yes, yes. and we'll catch you on sacrifice yes. Yes. Please do. yes thank you very much thank you all right guys Thank you. Thank you. Mama, we good? This is one of our best. Yes, this is one of our best uh, uh, interviews. So, oh man, very deep. Very deep. Oh, you got to be careful when you say that. People are going right. to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we definitely enjoyed you. We want to wish you continued yes. success with so all of your endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You guys be blessed, all right? I'm blessed. We'll do it again. We'll do it again. Yes, we will. To say the word. Sacrifice. <laughs> hey. Have a good evening. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs>